Emmanuel Macron seems like the perfect politician who appeals to pretty much everyone. He's just progressive enough to charm Hollywood actors and libertarian enough to seduce Wall Street sharks. Outside France, everyone wants to take a selfie with Macron. Inside France, however, it's an altogether different story. Check this out. Fires erupt in Paris as general strike creates travel nightmare, closing the Eiffel Tower and subway stations. Fox News. This news story is from weeks before the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic hit the media. And in theory, this story is really not so surprising. Violent riots are as common in France as croissants and menage a trois. But the question is, why are they protesting this time? Well, it's nothing less than pension reform. Let's state this clearly. Both France and Spain have a very serious problem with their pension system. Both countries have a pay-as-you-go system, where workers pay the pension of retirees. Fewer and fewer young people are contributing, and more and more old people are receiving their pensions. The system is on the verge of collapse, and it's here that you realise that pensions have something in common with the coronavirus pandemic. Both are very serious problems which could collapse an entire country. The collapse of pensions is not just any problem, it is THE problem, both in France and in Spain. But few politicians want to talk about it seriously, because all all solutions involve unpopular measures. Just as no politician wants to force his or her citizens into lockdown, no politician wants to say that there is no more money for your pension. And believe me, pensions in France are in need of reform. To give you an idea, we are talking about the most generous pensions in the world. French retirees receive an average 61% of their last salary, while in Germany, they receive only 38%. In fact, the OECD average is 49%. What's more, the French retirement age for receiving a pension without penalty is set at 62 years. By comparison, in Spain it's 65, but it's already on the way to 67, as set by the previous socialist government. Out of interest, 67 is the retirement age in Germany. And I know now what many of you are thinking. So Macron wants to lower pensions and raise the retirement age. But nothing of the sort. Macron's pension reform doesn't even go that far. It neither touches the retirement age nor does it touch pensions. So the question is, what's the problem then? Why are these pension reforms so controversial? And more importantly, will the Macron reform serve to address the pension problem in Europe? Today, we are going to answer all of these questions. Vestiges of the Sun King. In the last 400 years, France has gone from the Sun King, from the most absolute absolutism, to having one of the strongest democracies in the world. However, there is something that is not often mentioned. The absolute King of France was not the only person with privileges. Behind him, there was a whole court of nobles, officials and workers who also lived much better lives than the common people. And then came the French Revolution. The people seized power under the banner of liberty, equality and fraternity. Vive la France! And here comes the part that doesn't make it into the history books. Yes, it is true the revolutionary cut off the head of the king and so many others. But you cannot build a new country by killing all the elites that ruled it before. So the revolution came and went. But there were elites, collectives, that managed to keep their privileges. And not only for a few years. I'm talking about privileges that continue to this day. There is the corps de ballet and the workers of the Paris Opera who have enjoyed a special retirement regime since 1698. That's right, 1698. This is why in the 21st century we can read news stories like this one. The Paris Opera on strike to defend the pensions of Louis XIV, FR24. So what privilege did the Sun King grant the dancers? Nothing less than the right to retire at 42 years of age. And yes, I know that dance is a very demanding art form and pushes the human body to the extreme. You should just see me in nightclubs. But there are two things I should want to tell you. One, the medicine has advanced just a little in the last three centuries, and I imagine something would be able to done to relieve the dancers. And the second thing is that the workers of the Opera of Nice or Bordeaux are not eligible for this special retirement Machine. Because it only benefits the dancers who entertained the Sun King 400 years ago. That is, those working at the Paris Opera. In other words, this is a textbook privilege. A privilege that comes from as far back as before the French Revolution. But wait a minute, because they're not the only ones. The state-owned French railway company, or SNCF, operates the railway sector under a monopoly. Its workers are considered the most privileged in France. They can retire with two-thirds of their salary at the age of 50, under a special scheme dating back to when train drivers had to shovel coal. Although the retirement age will rise to 52 in 2024, their workers will continue to work a decade less than other French workers. <laughs> But in the end, this is nothing to be surprised about. After all, there are up to 42 different special pension schemes. As you can see, granting privileges is in the French DNA. It makes no difference whether the governing system is a democracy, an absolute monarch, or an emperor. Something similar happened in the mid 20th century when the welfare state was established. As we always say on visual politic, the devil is in the details. The problem is not the welfare state itself, but what kind of welfare state it is. And the latest one, an egalitarian one. 
For example, the welfare state in Nordic countries such as Sweden is very generous to anyone who is a citizen of the country. However, its civil servants do not have special privileges as in the case in other European countries. They are considered middle class and it is not considered appropriate that they should have those privileges. All this makes sense if we take into account the forefathers of the Swedish welfare state, the Swedish social democrats who came from the working class. That is why they did not want civil servants, who mostly came from the middle class, to have extra privileges. But France is not Sweden. We are talking about a very elitist country. To give you an idea, almost all political leaders in this country came from the same university, the École Nationale d'Administration. I'm so sorry, friends. This is a school where the children of the elites are trained to become politicians. In the last graduating class, only 1% of the students came from a family of modest means. In other words, as strange as it may sound, the land of liberty, equality and fraternity has elitism engraved in its DNA. We could say that France is enduring a permanent revolution of Republicans who deep down want to be emperors. So we are talking about a welfare state with privileges. They are civil servants, career civil servants, who have their job guaranteed in the public administration, a luxury nowadays. What's more, unlike in Sweden, where they are paid less, in France, a civil servant is paid practically the same if he or she worked for a private company. But it is in retirement that the privileges of French civil servants come to the fore. Whilst in private companies, an individual's salary over the last 25 years is taken into account to calculate their pension, the pensions of civil servants only take into account the final six years of their working lives. And of course, you can imagine all the bonuses they receive in their last years. For example, imagine a person who starts his or her career as a junior consultant and eventually becomes a partner in the company. It is quite possible that his pension will be smaller than that of any civil servant when the average of his or her could be calculated over the last last 25 years. And now you may be wondering, so what exactly is the problem with all this? Is it just that there are some groups with better retirement conditions than the rest? Well, the problem is that when anyone tries to touch their pensions, all of those specific groups get up in arms. It is the most logical thing to do. I mean, imagine if YouTubers were given $2,000 a month just for our pretty faces and hopefully to fix our teeth. If after 30 years some scoundrel tried to take that privilege away from us, well, you can be sure I won't be asking myself if it was fair or not. If they take away my tooth money, I will protest. And all this explains why, in France, every time a politician has wanted to reform pensions, the streets have turned against him. Jacques Chirac wanted to put an end to this special regime at first, but failed. The union protests of 1995 are mythical. Later, Sarkozy and Hollande pushed for some changes, but they did not dare to meddle with the privileged groups. Even so, whether right-wing or socialist, both governments were pressured by trade union mobilization. However, what these past presidents had to deal with is nothing compared to now. Serious altercations, police charging against demonstrators, and you're probably thinking, but what about the Macron reform? What has he done to provoke stronger protests than those of 1995? Well, we're going to check that out right now. Parasites. By now, you may be wondering, what is the main change that Macron is proposing? Well, nothing less than ending the 42 special pension schemes. The current system is running at a loss and it is not in a position to afford privileges. In return, Macron presents a universal points system in which all workers will receive points for their contribution and it doesn't matter in which sector that person has worked. These points will be worth exactly the same for dancers or mechanics, civil servants, or God help us all, YouTubers. So, of course, despite the unions not knowing what the reform would be like and the workers having no idea how it would affect them, the protests against the government began even before the reform was presented. Why? Well, because all those with privileges already knew that their sweet, sweet deal was coming to an end. There is also one thing we cannot ignore with Macron and his party, La République en marche, and that is that both the left and the right are set to bleed with Macron. Because the situation is the following. After the government of the socialist Hollande, which approved significant cuts, the working class looked for answers in other political forces. Therefore, the mobilisation against the pension reform has created an opportunity for the left to take back the streets despite other movements that escape its control, such as that of the Yellow Vests. So this debate has become a very good opportunity for the unions, who claim to be the ones defending the people against the government. But also, it's it's been good for the extreme right. Because in the era of Chirac or Sarkozy, everything was very clear. So who's complaining? The left-wing unions. But French politics today is more complicated than all that. Both the extreme left and the extreme right are up in arms against Macron. So while Macron has a stellar image outside France, inside he has the opposite. For the left, he is an evil capitalist against labour rights. For the right, he is a pro-greenie who wants to do away with privileges that run as deep as national identity. So where do all these feelings end up? Well, it's France. 
so they end up with mass protests. So how has Macron reacted to this street response? Well, his first move was very conventional for a representative of the new policy. 6,000 policemen to repress the unions. And of course, if you add in the president of the Yellow Vests, there are terms when the matter has gotten out of hand for the government. Macron denounces police violence, calls for improved code of ethics, RFI, pension reform. Pensions currently account for 14% of France's GDP. In the OECD, the average is 8%. In the elections that brought him to the Elysee presidential palace, he promised that he would reform pensions. And although his approach was ambitious, Macron has been softening his measures. The reform will not affect those over 45. In addition, it will not apply to train drivers over the age of 35 either. And it will only affect dancers at the Paris Opera who started working there in 2022. But the biggest concession carries a political coup. Macron wanted to raise the age for retiring with a full pension to 64 without penalty. The aim was to encourage people to retire later and to tackle the system's deficit, which could reach 12 billion euros. However, the government announced that it was giving up the 64 year threshold in exchange of passing the ball to others. Unions and employers have three months to find a financial balance by 2027. Le Monde. However, all of these discussions came to a screeching halt with the arrival of the pandemic. Both the employers and the unions agreed with the government to leave this issue until the year we are now in. 2021. In other words, it is only now that France hopes to resume this debate. And the political situation has changed slightly. Interestingly, Macron's approval ratings have grown with the coronavirus. Right now, with 40% approval, Macron is France's most popular president in 20 years. And you heard me right, 40% approval. The French, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, he could be the first president to repeat his term in this century. Now, as much approval as he has, the polls of voting intentions are not so favourable. At the time of making this video, there were many polls in which Emmanuel Macron is tied with Marianne Le Pen. At the moment, his bill has already reached the Senate and has been met with 41,000 amendments. No matter, Macron has a sufficient majority to pass the pension reform in the terms he deems appropriate. So now the question is over to you. Do you think Macron will be able to pull off his pension reform and to what extent will it impact his re-election? And just what will the French not riot over? Leave your answer in the comments below. As always, don't forget that we release new videos every week, so subscribe down there to the channel and hit the little bell button so you don't miss any of our updates. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.